Previously on Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. From somewhere, she could hear the sound of a siren. You could see a blinking red light. As she listened to that, somewhere in her consciousness, Tomei was working hard, refusing to rest. Even as her body grew heavier, she desperately struggled to remember. Repeating the words burned into her ears, panting as she tried to squeeze the words out of the back of her throat. Repeating it many times as it suffocated her. <laughs> Shiro Cabinet Office. And at last, she barely managed to spit the words out, mixed with bubbles of blood. But she was able to communicate to the person who found her. Then her eyelids grew heavy and calmly closed. <laughs> She's dead, isn't she? Yes! <laughs> After that cruel sentence, Maka-sen let out a small scream and rushed into the operating room. Then...事件が起こったのは午後5時頃。喧嘩のような怒号を聞きつけたトラック運転手が様子を見に行くと、作業服姿の男2名と女性が車の脇で揉み合っていたのを目撃しています。そして警察を呼ぼうと近くの電話ボ
Both Natsumi Kimiyoshi and Aoi Hatakiyama had some manner of mental disorder. And based on the ingredients in the medicine, it can be inferred that they lacked the ability to suppress their anger and other emotions. They probably tried to correct it with education and discipline. But when their symptoms became too apparent, the two of them probably needed to rely on this fast-acting medicine to mentally stabilize themselves. However, the stronger the medicine, the more they grow dependent on it. And the side effects of withdrawal become even more apparent. As much as it suppresses the sudden surge of emotion, the user will suffer a massive rebound the moment the medicine wears off. And that can result in heightened destructive urges, development of a persecution complex, or other extreme thoughts and actions. In other words, these emotional explosions can temporarily drive them into a violent mindset and massively elevate the risk of outlandish behavior. うるさいって言ったんだけど。うん、夏美。はっきり言って、鬱陶しいんだよ。顔見るたび、ベタベタしたり、つまんない冗談言って自分だけ盛り上がってさ。あんまり慣れ慣れしく話しかけて、勝手
it just feels like this whole thing is dragging out a lot long a lot longer than I feel like it should have been at this point. I don't know how else to describe it. But all that being said though, I mean Minai's dead and Natsumi is uh, still uh, in serious mental decline and it's putting considerable strain on her relationships with her friends. And well, if how the, if how the last episode ended and is any indication, I feel like we're truly uh, getting to uh, getting to our climax for this arc at this point. But I feel like I've also been saying that for the last couple episodes already too. So once again, I feel like a broken record. So just makes me circle right back to what I was saying just a second ago about how it feels like as though this whole thing's dragging out a lot longer than it feels like it really should. But I feel like I'm just repeating myself at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Oh yeah, that's right. Kano also wants Akasaka to come home. Pronto. So yes, Kano, please explain to us. Why must we stop our investigation? Did some spooky man in a black suit and shades come visit you and threaten you or something to that effect? Your boss threatened to, uh, hold back a big portion of your salary? Speaking from inside Chief Yamoki's office, I shout into the receiver in a rough voice. It was unreasonable. The director's order was absolutely unthinkable. Wasn't this supposed to be a secret investigation in the first place? Upper management shouldn't even be aware of it. Then why? Well, I got theory as to how they would know about it. You are you are in the thick of the investigation. A member of the Metropolitan Police Force. Or Tokyo Police Force. Why am I forgetting which? Why am I forgetting the damn name of the uh, police organization that you're a part of? But point is, you are who you are, Akasaka. So you having any contact with any local police districts that are in any way tied to the Hinamizawa conspiracy? I mean. I'm sure Ward is get, well, sure, I'm sure Ward got around to somebody who had some connection to the conspiracy that just so happened to be in the area. I mean, I know I could explain this better. I'm kind of fumbling over my words here a little bit, but I just think it, I just think the simple answer is uh, somebody eventually somebody simply reported your presence here, and that was enough to uh, get some higher ups to start questioning. Why is he? Why is our man Akasaka over here, of all places? And why is he investigating? Why is he investigating the Hinamizawa residence? From that point on, they would just probably need to just put two and two together, and they would probably come to the logical conclusion that, well, maybe he's either here on his own or he's collaborating with somebody to look into this, and then just react accordingly. あの、さん。やっと。たくさんの人の協力と。犠牲で何かが掴めそうなんです。ひなみざ村で信仰されてきた。親城様の脅威とその実態が何に裏付けられてきたのか。それが何かわかるまで、もう少しだけやらせてください
私も片岡室長に再考を何度もお願いしてきただけど今日連絡が来たんだよ警察庁の警備局から私と君を名指しでね警察庁なぜ The Security Bureau of the National Police Agency was the headquarters of public security across the entire country. The Metropolitan Police Department, okay, I did remember that right, I worked for fell under their umbrella, and public security police carried out activities all around the nation under their orders. Yet, how were they able to learn about our research activities? You, well, it's like I was saying. Somebody must have reported you here. Could be that tra could be that traitor within this precinct, for all we know. Ima Kimino Iru Kakiuchi or Chushini, Kimio Najikan got Zokatsu Stadio. Sono Jikan no Ikuskawa, Koiki Jikan to stay Kesat Show no Ningan got Tokra Sarer Kotoni Natan Dagado. Sono Saini, Hinamizawa Shushin Shani Taisu Kikomi Okona Tiru Kaji Gairu, Toyu Joho got Karela and Stava Sarashi. しかしそれでなぜ警備局少なくとも今回の調査活動は避難沢大災害の背後にあった住民たちに関与する者の存在を探るといったものです警備局の関与するところではないはずじゃないですか検察庁の話では広域事件として社会的影響を考慮して情報規制が行われるらしいでその捜査の邪魔になるから活動を控えるようにというのが表向きの理由だけどね表向きじゃあ本当の理由は何なんですか<笑>君の周りに誰かいるかいいえ私だけですうん。But based on that precondition, it was clear that Kano san was concerned about the spread of confidential information. My entire body tensed as I recognized the weight of that implication. Nonetheless, I answered, Please tell me. Cabinet Research Division. That was an agency that collected and analyzed information for cabinet ministers, including the prime minister. So why on earth would they obstruct a public safety investigation? Moreover, the subject we're investigating is a terrible incident, but it revolves around a rural village and a simple commuter town. It's not a major economic region for the country, and it's not the sort of place that normally receives government scrutiny. So why on earth? It's even more incomprehensible than the Security Bureau ordering an end to the investigation! Kano-san... ...sono riyu wa... ...sumanai... ...sore ijou no fukai li wa... ...watashi ni totte mo kiken ga ooki sugi ru nda... ...tada... ...sono kankei sha ga anyaku shite... ...keisat chou to wareware ni atsi liuk o kake te kita... ...sore dake wa maachigai ga nai... ...so... ...kimi no kimochi wa... いた私も君には割に合わない仕事をお願いしてしまったものだと後悔しているそれでも分かってもらいたい内調が乗り出してきたとなればもはや国家レベルの政治的判断がこの件には関わっていることになるその影響力は君も前の事件でよく分かっ
I knew it. It was an acronym that frequently came up during work. But I couldn't make the connection because they didn't seem to have any relevance to this investigation. However... I slammed the phone into the chief's desk with enough force to break it. They were the ones interrupting my investigation. The incidents related to Hinamazawa natives were being blocked as a wide area incident. And. And! They even robbed Chief Inspector Minai of her life! Everyone. Everyone! What was hiding beneath this great Hinamazawa disaster? They killed 2,000 villagers, and even the people who escaped from that disaster have been caught up in bizarre incidents that robbed them of their lives. They even killed a detective who was trying to unearth that secret. So why the hell are they, why are they doing this? And, and, even though I've only managed to grasp the shadow of the tale, how can I retreat here without learning anything? Then, what was the point of coming here at all? <laughs> It's lunacy. How can they go through with this? Why would they do something so cruel? For power. Simple as. All this is just for certain factions within your government to acquire more power for themselves. And pursue that power whether it's one person, ten, a hundred, a couple thousand, they're just those people, their hopes, their dreams, their lives, their aspirations, their pasts, presents, and futures, all of them are nothing more than pure statistics, pure numbers on a spreadsheet that those people will use and sacrifice as needed in order to acquire more and more power for themselves. Real Sons of Bitches Saturday, July 9th, 1983 The rain was pouring like a waterfall last night. Even after the rain let up, it was still a bit chilly for a day in July and my throat was starting to feel irritated. Come to think of it, my body felt a little heavy when I got off from the hotel bed. Of course, that might just be because I've been feeling depressed lately. I sat down on one of the chase lounges in the break room and filled with a warm can of black tea in both my hands muttering to myself in self-loathing. Suddenly, I saw the figure of Chief Inspector Minai sitting in the chair before me, smiling my way, and it quickly dissipated. Come to think of it, that was where she sat when we ate through that mountain of hamburger. when she ate through that mountain of hamburgers. Like, where did I get the wee from? She was a one-man hamburger-eating machine. She didn't need your help, Akasaka. With those eating habits, she had a life of medical troubles to look forward to in the near future. Somehow, I wanted to help her get through that. But she was already gone, so there was no sense worrying about it now. I responded to the figure that was no longer there, and lamented how powerless and irrational I had become, as I tightly squeezed the can in my hands. After that, 
I let Uushi-san and the others know that I received orders to suspend my investigation. Uushi-san was discouraged at first, but like a true veteran, he quickly moved on and actually tried to cheer me up. お神の命令じゃ仕方ありませんよ。私は引き続き調査を続けますので、何かあったらすぐにお知らせします。大石さんも気をつけてください。あなたまで強靭に会われたなんて知らせは絶対に聞きたくありませんから。私は死にませんよ
運がいいことに彼女の担任が私の顔なじみでしたから、なんとか協力してもらいましたがね。Well, it's nice that you got these records and all, but what exactly am I supposed to do with them now? Akasaka has been called off the investigation. I mean, unless he's, pl- unless he's, gonna, he's planning to go solo Texas Ranger on, on, on everybody and just do things on his own, then frankly, <laughs> there's really not much point in showing this to me. The search warrant was authorized by Chief Yamaoki, so they were reluctant to cooperate with a request from a neighboring prefecture's police department. Then, Ushi san spread out Natsumi Kimiyoshi's reports and documentation. The Koko no Shirio ni yorimas to ne, ma otonashiku, majime de, hito no hana shio yoku kiku. Koyu kanke mo soko soko de, seiseki mo chu no jo kara, jo no ge atari. Doko ni demo iru, futsu no onna no kodos yo. Taskani, so des ne. I thought back to my first meeting with her. At first glance, she seemed like a kind hearted girl who enjoyed reading books. She seemed a little shy and had some difficulty talking with others, but that was pretty common for girls her age, so it didn't seem noteworthy. However, I noticed the photo of her face attached there and was surprised when I saw it. The Natsumi Kimiyoshi I saw there had long hair, with bangs that covered her eyes, making her look like a ghost. ザシキワラシって言われていたそうなんですよ。ザシキワラシ。陰気なイメージでそう呼ばれていたんでしょうな。まず強調性がなく、いつも一人でいることが多い。人に話しかけられても反応が鈍く、何か気に入らないことがあ
She probably ra rationalized it as, if I talk to the teacher again, mom will get angry. And then, she avoided talking to anyone. She was worried that her mother might get angry if she spoke to anyone, for any reason. Then, she drove herself deeper into isolation. That's what I want now. With the Natsumi that we see when we first start her story, I mean, to, to uh, go from what you're describing here into that, I mean, that's quite a drastic personality change. うん、そのand it was around this time that she was suddenly given her uh, mysterious prescriptions. Those capsules, right? Anemia. It happens due to an iron deficiency in the blood that prevents the flow of oxygen. And symptoms include a dizziness and fainting during exercise or regular activity. It's not an incurable disease, but examination and treatment can take a long time because of the risk of complications with other diseases. しかし、入院して体調が良くなって、いきなり精神状態まで改善されるものなんでしょうか。体調不良が普段からの素行の悪さの原因としても、なんだか変ですね。まあ、うん。かなり上昇志向の強い教育ママさんだったようで。君吉夏美の体調第一に考えていた祖母の君吉秋とはよく意見がぶつかっていたと町内でも噂になっていたそうです。Well, Life in the city had a completely different rhythm and flow compared to a rural town. Natsumi had only just overcome her sense of isolation and gained the ability to interact with others normally. So, if she was forced to live in an unfamiliar place, would she regress to her old personality? Clearly, her grandmother Aki was worried about that. However, Haruku saw her daughter's improvement as a sign she should push her daughter into a good environment. Certainly, if you just want to get a job in a rural area and raise a family, your academic background won't make much of a difference. However, if you're aiming to work for a major company in the city, you'll need to attend an appropriate college. With that in mind, a cram school in the city would be better to able to provide classwork that prepares students for college entrance exams. Materials I read earlier mentioned that Har Haruko Kimiyoshi had attended a rural university with a poor reputation. And her husband, Toji Kimiyoshi, went to the same university. 
They probably experienced difficulties finding jobs at their education level, and they were trying to push their daughter into higher education to keep her from suffering the same fate. I didn't think that was wrong, but the implication was quite different if Natsumi Kimiyoshi understood that, or if she was just obeying her mother out of fear. Could that dissatisfaction turn into a hatred or a grudge, gradually making her more and more depressed? Until something triggered her to explode? Those emotions could be the driving force behind a murderous intent. Much like with Aoi, right? Or more passive emotions like rejection. <laughs> he had a Eureka moment, that's what's wrong. I thought back to the report Chief Inspector Minai received from Matsuoka of the, Gif of the Jifu Prefectural Police about Natsumi Kimiyoshi's medicine, and I explained my reasoning to Ushi-san. Kimiyoshi Natsumi was using the medicine from the time ago, the medicine from 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 the medicine. その薬を服用するようになってから。いや。服用するようになったからこそ。彼女は性格が一変したということではないでしょうか。はあ。それはどういう。つまりです。彼女の症状は貧血症ではなく失神だったのではという話です。They're often confused, but the root cause might have been a mental problem instead of anemia. There is a mental phenomenon that can cause the mind to flip the breaker and shut off consciousness. For example, when a person, feel, when a person feels violent urges, instinct can fill a person's mind with destructive desires and murderous intent, but the rational part of the brain can recognize that action as improper and try to suppress it. And as people grow older, the rational part of the brain is strong enough to overpower their instinct, so most adults are able to avoid taking impulsive actions. However, what if the subject was going through adolescence, and the rational part of the brain wasn't mature enough to handle it? Children who haven't developed the mechanisms to deal with the sudden surges of instinct wouldn't be able to control the explosion of emotions, and in some cases, those thoughts can turn into actions. Typical examples include destructive behavior, murder, suicide. The exact reasons are unclear, but one of the reasons that young people can suffer injuries from surges of emotion is that they lack the ability to suppress instinct. Still, there are some children who mature early and are able to think rationally, especially in women who seem to mentally mature faster than men. So, those boys and girls are able to suppress explosions of instinct by making the right choices? Indeed. But one drastic workaround the mind can take for that is the intentional severance of consciousness, otherwise known as fainting. だから本来なら異常行動に出るような激しい衝動に駆られた時はそれでも苦しい場合は意識を寸断することで行動に出ることを回避し続けていたそれが中学時代の他者との確実につながった But the implication that we have here is that ever since at least middle school, Natsumi had struggled with violent impulses so strong that her that her uh, mind that her mind and body had to respond and had to respond by suppressing it to the point to where she fainted. So clearly, going by this train of logic, her emotional her emotional control must really not have been that great when she was that young. At least not, at least not great in the sense to where it functions normally even for a young kid. 
which probably isn't saying much because as you pointed out their brains are underdeveloped and in, in regards to the rat in regards to the rational parts of their brains but even so her case is clearly abnormal and I'm still willing to bet you that Hinamizawa syndrome has something to do with this. I don't know what else it could be other than just an inherent personality flow disorder. In other words, Natsumi was isolating herself from others because she struggled while interacting with them. In order to prevent herself from exploding impulsively, she built a wall around herself for protection. In the bottom of her heart, she felt angry and sad about her unreasonable surroundings while hiding her inner hatred. え、しかしそれがその友恵ちゃんが分析を頼んでいた例の薬とどういう関係があるんですか君吉夏美はその抗興奮系の薬を服用することで普段から鬱積していた黒い感情つまり母親をはじめとした周囲への憎悪を解消
from above that were impossible to understand. The private detective industry was capable of dispensing justice all the time at a smaller scale. It would allow me to delve deeper into the mysteries of Hinamazawa as a top priority. Wouldn't that be a better way to mourn the deaths of Rika-chan and Chief Inspector Minai? Just then. What's going on now? Oh shit. Did Chisato get uh, smacked senseless by Natsumi or something? <laughs> Speaking of Seki General Hospital, I was there earlier asking about that medicine, and the victim was a high school student. <laughs> For a moment, the face of Natsumi Kimiyoshi floated into my mind. Then, oh, Hello there, Discount Akasaka. It was Detective Fujita, running fast. He seemed to be in a bit of a panic, sweating and breathing hard like he was searching for something inside the police station. I boarded the car with Detective Fujita behind the wheel when we head to the crime scene at Saiki General Hospital. Unfortunately, Wushi-san had just left the station, so I contacted him on his pager and was still waiting for a reply. で、犯人はどこに逃走した模様です。白昼ということで、人もそれなりにいたはずなのですが、それらしき人物を目撃した人はまだいないということです。はあ、被害者は Detective Fujita gave me an overview of the incident. The victim, Chisao Saiki, arrived at the hospital around 2 p.m. with her driver, Yamashina. She said she had to plan to meet up with her father and tend to wait in the lobby until her scheduled meeting time. A few minutes later, the victim remembered something and said, I'll come back later, to Yamashina, then left the hospital alone. After their scheduled meeting time passed, Yamashina thought it was suspicious that she hadn't come back even after her father arrived, so he searched the surrounding area. Then, he found the victim bleeding from her head on the ground in the garden by the Saiki Care and Welfare Center. He immediately brought her to the hospital and called the police. Kyokia, どうやら突然背後から襲われて見る暇がなかったと他にも心当たりとかがないか事情聴取を行いましたが体調の不良を理由に中途で打ち切っておりますなるほど Could this be a random attack? Or did the attacker hold a grudge? And if so, why? 被害者の佐伯千里は例の君吉夏美と親しかったようですしかも Two police officers were standing in front of the hospital room where the victim, Chisao Saiki, was recovering. One of them was Detective Hanada. Oh, お疲れ様です。状況は。さっきまで眠っていたようですが、少し前に学友が入ってきて中で話し込んでいます。
Listening carefully, I could hear a mix of sad and gentle voices coming from inside the hospital room. Maybe she was crying in relief after learning a friend came running here worried about her. まだ精神的に安定しているとは言えない状況です。簡単にあまり刺激をしないようお願いします。わかりました。I nodded to Detective Hanada, then knocked on the door of the hospital room. After a while, a firm voice called back. Who is it? 刑事の赤坂です。少々、お時間よろしいでしょうか? I could clearly hear some wary breathing from the other side of the door. The silence continued for a while, and the moment I began to fear I was being declined, a voice called back, Come in. See, Tom goes here. In the hospital room, I found a girl laying in the bed and a girl in a school uniform sitting on a chair next to her. I quietly pulled my police badge from my breast pocket and held it up for the two of them. The victim, Chisato Saiki-san, lifted her bo- upper body from the bed. She was wearing a gown and it still looked feverish, as she held her head. She looked to her friend and said it's fine before turning back to me and speaking. この通りの体ですからあんまり長時間は勘弁してください。それに大抵のことはすでに別の刑事さんにお答えしています。ええ、理解しています。そちらに行ってもよろしいでしょうか? I lightly bowed my head in appreciation, then moved beside the victim's bed, across from where her friend was sitting. Her friend glared at me with a distrusting distrusting expression on the verge of disgust. But in contrast, Chisao-san looked at me with a slightly gloomy expression. Of course, the moment I said that, Chisao-san turned her gaze downward, and she started to bite her lip. I began to wonder if it would be alright to discuss this with her other friend sitting right here. Chisao-san was still biting her lip. So the other girl responded on her behalf in a slightly trembling voice. あなたは。私、牧村玉子と言います。ここの千里さんと同じく。夏美の。そうですか。夏美を疑っているんですか。もしそうなら見当違いです。あの子はこんなひどいこと。できる子じゃないですから。トマコ、あんた。いいえ、言わせて千里。私聞いたの。アキラちゃんから夏美がおかしくなったのは変な連中に踏み出すに呼び出されてからだって。その時夏美すごく怯えて泣いてたって。それひ
千里に気が利かないって言ってたくせに私が一番あの子のことを分かってあげてなくてそんな<笑>謝りたい何もできなくてごめんって勝手に勘違いして嫌ったりしてごめんなさいって私夏美に謝りたいそうでなきゃ私私<笑> Tears began spilling down on the ground from Tomiko san's face Facing the strength of her compassion for her friend, I couldn't say anything to defend myself. やめなよ、タマコ刑事さんたちだって事情があってのことなんだこの人を責めるのは筋違いだしむしろチサヨさん tried to comfort タマコさん who was still crying but then she grimaced as she seemed to remember something when I saw that I sighed to follow up with a more difficult question あなたは君吉夏美さんの事情をどの程度ご存知ですか<笑>言いたくない気持ちはよくわかります私だってこの件でたくさんの人に関わって多くの惨劇を目の当たりにしてきましたそのせいで自分が多くの人に不幸をもたらしているのではないかと疑って恐れ中途で調査をやめるべきではないかとなですがですが聞いてください最近あなたのご友人夏美さんはまだ生きています死者はどうあっても帰ってこないが生きている人ならまだ救うことができるはずなんです違いますか私が望むのは彼女の逮捕じゃない彼女を救うことなんですそれだけは信じてくださいチサウシェンさんの背中が少し動いて、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りながら、彼女は手を握りなんか他人のようには思えなくて Chief Inspector Minai was thinking of Natsumi Kimiyoshi until the very end It would take a tremendous amount of strength to see this investigation through to the end But even so at the very least I should do my best because she wanted to save her With that, she can rest a little easier to atone for this. Natsumi san wa ima kurushin de imas. Sore demo, kemei ni akumu ni teikou shite, kyoko o osai yo to shite iru. Anata o ijido ou dashite tousou shita no ga sono shouko da. Chigai mas ka? Ontou ni akumu ni shihai sare te itara, anata o satsugai suru made o osoi tizuke ta hazu da. そこまでしなかっただから私はまだ彼女を救える道は残っていると信じています刑事さんチサオさん took a deep breath and opened her eyes and Tomiko さん looked away as she gripped at her chest right since I came here I was already considering the possibility that Natsumi Kimiyoshi was the person who attacked, who attacked, attached? I think you mean attacked, 
who attacked Chisato Saiki-san. And after listening to the two of them in this room, I was absolutely convinced. They knew. They knew that she was the culprit. Nevertheless, they tried to hide it. To protect her. They felt incredible compassion for their friend. However... Yet, regaining her old life is probably close to impossible. After all the pain she's experienced, she was probably questioning whether it would be easier to take her own life. Of all my might, I held my breath to steal myself as I held her hand on the bed and looked into her eyes. Maybe this is all a useless struggle, but even so, we should never lose hope. Otherwise, thinking of her, of Chief Inspector Minai, would be just too painful. As a result, I need to do everything in my power to prevent any further violence. And then... Chisao-chan breathed in and out many, many times, with a slight quiver on her lips. It may not have lasted very long, but for me, and the two friends of Natsumi Kimiyoshi sitting before me, the silence seemed to cause time to stop as the heavy air caused our bodies to freeze. The only thing I could hear was the faint cry of the Higurashi at dusk. And then... Chisao san clenched Tomko's hand, san's hand with both of her hands, then spoke in a soft voice. The siren of the police car flashed red and made a tumultuous racket. With Detective Fujita at the wheel, the scenery blew past me out the window, out the passenger side window. Will we make it in time? Won't we? That was up to the will of the gods at this point. However, the blood, sweat, and tears of many people brought us to this point. I wanted to finish this here. Truly, right here. Akasaka Kishi. Bye. With the siren blaring and the radio making a racket, Detective Fujita called out and called to me in a gentle tone that didn't match the surrounding atmosphere. And then. 
赤坂さんは偉くなってくださいよ皆井さんの口癖だったんです中途半端な権限だから正しいことをしたくてもできないだから私も偉くならないと、ね、そのために頑張って優秀ってことを認められて出世するんだって藤田さん俺赤坂さんに期待していますからだって皆井さん赤坂さんのことずっと褒めていましたよ頑張って腕磨いてあなたみたいな優秀な人の部下として働けるようになりたいってあの人の気持ち忘れないであげてくださいね<笑>ええもちろんです忘れやしませんよ決して My heart was racing as I considered everything going on but I looked straight ahead and thought fast Right Just like Wuji said, I can't escape either. Yuki, Rika chan, Chief Inspector Minai. I'm carrying the lives and dreams of many people. And Miyuki. Even though I felt regret about leaving her alone, Chief Inspector Minai encouraged me and said that she would understand one day. That's right. Someday. I want her to understand. To believe in the things I do as a detective. I don't want to be a detective. I don't want to be a detective. Seeing that reply, the look of determination on Detective Fujita's face eased into a smile as he nodded. And then. Suddenly, I heard Monica san screaming through the radio. Based on the light on the radio, this wasn't a broadcast communication. She was communicating only to us. On top of that, a serious tone of her voice gave us reason to expect the worst. ついてくださいそこに何があったんですか現場の遺留品にコーンというの文字が書かれた人型を発見したそうです年齢はまだ公表していませんが村修前後の老女との話でした They found Aki <笑>あ、赤坂さんそれって There was no need for Detective Fujita to say it I felt the same thing We haven't been able to contact Uushi ever since he left. Is he all right? He didn't get killed or anything, did he? わかりました。とにかく私たちは現場に急ぎましょう。了解です。Maybe we can still make it in time. No, we have to make it in time. I clenched both my fists as I passively convinced myself of that. Finally, some major excitement. The same day, somewhere in Kakuchi City, the dust coated the park in, the, in a blood red hue, casting an eerie shadow on the premises. Sati, do shimashou ka ne? Ushi stood up from the park bench and crushed his cigarette under his foot. Even though it had become more predictable, there was no satisfaction in it. But a labored feeling weighed down on his shoulders and pushed on his entire body, making it hard to move. It happened completely by coincidence. He stopped by a restaurant to grab a late lunch, 
and by chance he noticed a TV broadcasting a date and time drama, the Volton message on the bottom of the screen. A woman's body found on Mountain Road in Jifu, in Jifu Prefecture, currently identifying. When he saw that message, Ushi immediately thought back to the investigation meeting from the other day. レノ君。Ushi rushed to contact Kakuchi Station, but unfortunately all the investigators, including Nakasaka, were out heading to the Kimiyoshi household. Maka told him she was about to leave, too. Thus, he had no choice but to directly contact the Jifu Prefectural Police about the woman's head discovered in the mountains. However, they refused to confirm any details on the grounds of confidentiality. <sighs> Nowadays, he was feeling lost and frustrated by how vertically split the police departments had become. Each station had a limited scope of responsibility, called a jurisdiction boundary. Simply put, it was their territory and the vast majority of the people in those organizations had little respect for outsiders. Might as well just be op might as well just be ru run by freaking organized cr crime groups, only the criminals in this case are wearing badges. Well, some of them are. I mean, not all of you are conspiring to uh, keep the, the, the truth of a couple thousand people's murder in the dark, but some of your bosses certainly are. So, even when speaking of a fellow policeman, they'd be tight-lipped with details when, de when dealing with anyone from outside their territory. Plus, it allowed them to pin the blame on others. Ushisen was doing investigative work with Kakuchi Station's Chief Yamaoki, but anything coming out of that could cause problems. He grew weary of this closed, troublesome system many years ago. But as a member of society, he had no choice but to endure it. <laughs> if he said, I'd like to cooperate because I believe that that's Aki Kimiyoshi's corpse, and asked for support, how would they respond? Plus, he was from the Hinamazawa area, so they might be interested in his relation to this curse. If he asked something like that, what would happen. It was easy to predict. Naturally, they'd be completely surprised and want to ask him for details about the situation. Then, the Jifu, uh, the Jifu Prefectural Police would report that Ushisen was doing investigative activities, and that information would be transmitted to the higher-ups in command. Jordan, even within Chief Yamoki's Kakuchi Station, the number of people willing to collaborate was dwindling because they couldn't distinguish ally from enemy. Another station couldn't be trusted. Indeed, Ushi had grown suspicious of the Jifu Prefectural Police since the nurse burning incident a while back. When faced with that level of opposition, information gathering was like drawing blood and it was incredibly frustrating. As a result, Wushi couldn't reveal his true intentions, and had to rely on vague excuses like it resembles a person from a search case. Nevertheless, there was a chance they'd feel anger and contempt for the person calling them. <coughs> After all, indirect attacks were in Ushi's field of expertise. When someone becomes suspicious of another, they can develop a desire to indirectly harm them, 
then break away to become more confident. Either way, for now, the best choice was to watch things slowly. When Ushi first contacted Natsumi Kimiyoshi, he saw her as an innocuous target. However, after learning her past and discovering that her grandmother, Aki Kimiyoshi, may have fallen into the worst possible situation, he began to think it was the opposite. Natsumi Kimiyoshi almost certainly had some involvement in the incident, or at least knowledge of the circumstances. And, if Tomei's words were right, she looked completely different beneath the surface. So, to prevent any further tragedies, securing her as soon as possible was the top priority. It was probably going to be some time before the Jifu Prefectural Police determined the identity of Aki Kimiyoshi, so they wouldn't have a warrant to search the Kimiyoshi you know, Yoshi house until then. That timeline was truly their last opportunity. If he squandered this time, it would be too late. Ikimasuka. He began walking down this path for the second time. Last time he came, he was struck by a sudden downpour and had to hurry out of there. That was when he met Natsumi for the first time, at the steps in front of the Kimiyoshi house. He had no way of knowing she was such a problematic child back in Okinomiya. Ushi simply didn't have that information available to him. Even if she was a problem child, those were nothing unusual. Unless she was organizing a rampage, the police couldn't, wouldn't be too concerned about it and would eventually forget about her. And regarding her so-called troubles at school, there was nothing to latch on to. People cared about the school upbringing of the next generation, but it wasn't the sort of thing they saw on a daily basis. Indeed, they had no idea what sickness she was being hospitalized for, or what treatment was being done. Only so much observation from afar could be tolerated without creating an information control to totalitarian state. He suddenly muttered to himself, trying to think. The people behind the curse probably wanted to disseminate fear to the general public, so maybe they saw Natsumi Kimiyoshi as an ideal target. At least on the surface, Natsumi looked like an ordinary girl, without any problems. A child like that getting caught up in these tragedies just because she was from Hinamazawa. If that were to happen, how would it change people's perception of Hinamazawa? Maybe people would see them like live ammunition and avoid touching them to protect themselves from the curse. It could lead to discrimination and persecution as well. And then, the people from Hinamazawa would feel even more isolated from the world, which would drive them into hiding, burying the truth behind this curse and this, the disaster forever. As soon as the thought came to him, he let out a sigh. But what was the reason to display such a flashy curse and then silence the voices of the non-believers? A total of 2,000, 2000 casualties seems just too much. Ushisen was unable to shake the feeling that the incident was manufactured to be a major social phenomenon. Otto? He suddenly turned his gaze to the fountain in the park and noticed a girl in a familiar uniform talking to a male student. Natsumi? Even from this distance, that hairstyle was unmistakable. Natsumi Kimiyoshi. And the boy beside her. Oh, no. It was the boy who rescued her at the coffee shop on that rainy day a week ago. A boy with a strong glow in his eyes. Ushi was sure that Natsumi Kimiyoshi referred to him as Todu-kun. 
The conversation between the two of them echoed through the park. And with nobody else around, Wushi was able to hear someone from a decent distance, distance away. Natsumiya evasively laughed at the boy with a serious look on his face. Even without noticing Ushi's approach, the two of them stood there in the tense atmosphere. Based on the bag sitting by their feet, the two of them were probably on the way home from school. It was clear from the atmosphere that these two weren't just classmates. They were close. And... Ushi realized that their closeness was contributing to the tense air that was forming between that was forming between the two of them. <laughs> Unable to find the words to speak to each other, the silence continued. Behind the silent air hid a truth that each of them wanted to hear, but they couldn't bring themselves to ask and they didn't want to say anything more. Sensing that their emotions were winding down, Ushi took the opportunity to approach the two of them. Yeah, <laughs> when she finally sensed another person and looked back toward Ushi, Natsumi's complexion completely changed. And as he approached, she started looking more and more upset. <laughs> Natsumi's shoulders were trembling. So the boy, Akira Todu, stood in front of Uushi to protect her. Oh, yeah. This is a あ、もしかしてお邪魔でしたか何か用ですかうーん、特に用はないんですよ。あなたには。That obvious provocation brought a look of fury to Akira's face. わっかいなそれにしても。Standing behind Akira, Natsumi looked unusually frightened. She had originally given off a meek impression, but it was far worse than when he met her before. Something the past week must have had a major influence on her. She was starting to look completely unstable, unable to handle the situation. No doubt, this girl was hiding something about the incident and about herself. <laughs> そうそう。実はですね、以前この公園で偶然こんなものを拾いましたね。ほら。Ushi <笑> held out a small pill case. And when Natsumi saw it, she lunged forward and snatched it away with a surprised expression on her face. Based on that reaction, Ushi and Akira both looked back at her in shock. キミヨシ。おやおや。やっぱりあなたのだったんですね。同姓同名かと思って警察に届けようと思っていたんですが、いや、良かった良かった。うん。要はそれだけですか。なら、もう外してもらえませんか。俺、キミヨシとこれから出
引っ込み思案なおとなしい子だって話でしたがあんな風に土星を上げるほどに気が強いとはちょっと意外でした Ushi thought back to what Tomei said about Natsumi. But she was only a shadow of that now. She was surprised when she lied to her. And it was still hard to believe. Even though Ushi had learned that she was originally a problem child, he never would have expected her to snap. She was more the timid type who would shut herself in and say nothing. In that case, Who on earth was the Natsumi that Tomoe saw? Ma, Ojama de Shitara Sasa to Taisan Shimaskedo, ne? A soiba Sakyodo, Gujdak no Mayo Totan Deskedo, he Nurikaite Masta, ne? Nanka, Itazragaki demo Sarchai Masta? Gogo Saikin Oin Desio, ne? Kabe ni Itazragaki o Sareta Yenga. テレビとか雑誌で見たことありませんウシオフレスマイルを carefully studying Natsumi's reaction。For a person on the verge of snapping, that obstinate way of talking would be infuriating.It wouldn't be too out of place here to catch a glimpse of her alternate face, like Akasaka and Tomei were talking about.However, マヨケのあれ誰がお書きになったんでしょうねひょっとしてあなたのご家族が<笑> Natsumi's trembling was growing more pronounced Looking at her reaction it was clear that she wanted to deny it but she curled in on herself more and more ああそうそうおばあちゃんお元気ですかご近所の方々が心配してましたよそそれはここ数日お顔見てないってどこかお出かけになっているんですか<笑>君をしアキュラ looked concerned as he turned towards Natsumi but she refused to answer beyond shaking her head several times As her lips quivered. To. 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 In front of her classmate, or perhaps in front of her lover. If she truly had a violent side lurking behind all this, it was hard to believe she kept it hidden all this time. And if Natsumi was patient enough to do that, she wouldn't have snapped in the first place. Ushi didn't think she had a cunning enough personality for that. <laughs> He scratched his head, struggling to reconcile Tomoe's story and Akasaka's reasoning of what he saw. For now, Ushi thought about following her home to hear a more detailed story, but Akira stretched his hands out his hand to stop him. She's probably just keeping herself in check in front of Akira. Hmm? Anata, nan no tsumori desu? <笑>いや、勇ましいというか、身の程を知らないお子様ですね。突っ込んでろと言ってるのがわからないのが。ほら。彼女は怖がってるんです。そっとしといてあげてくれませんか。thinking it was nothing but trouble, Ushi tried to intimidate him. But even though Akira was truly frightened, he confronted Ushi with strength in his voice. Maybe he was about to receive a beating, but he stretched out his entire body to try and stop him. When Ushi recognized the strength of his spirit, 
he realized that Akira was more than just a classmate. <laughs> Akira raised his voice as he glared at Ushi, as if he held a child in his hands and was crying out to protect it from death. Ushi could never hate such a passionate young man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess you could kind of argue that uh, pol that uh, a police force is, in a way, kind of a, a organized group of people that is willing to uh, to uh, deal a shakedown on on people who don't comply with the law. Akira continued staring at Ushi and refused to move. Apparently, that's how things looked. He felt disappointed from the bottom of his heart. When Akira looked at the police badge Ushi held up, Tension ran across his face. His eyes revealed that he hadn't expected this. They had the color of despair and understanding that the worst possible outcome had arrived. After taking a deep breath and scribbling in his notebook, Ushi took a seat at the nearest park bench. Akira remained standing and looked down at Ushi as he lit a cigarette. Ushi San dared to offer an ambiguous response and had a smile on his face as he started to study Akira's reaction. Ushi wasn't sure how much the boy knew about Natsume. Then, Akira didn't sound too angry when the word Hinamizawa slipped out. Once Ushi heard that, he sat up straight and looked at him with a content expression. なるほど。それについては既にご存知というわけですか。詳しくは知りません。ただ、出身がその隣町の沖宮と聞きましたから、それで君吉家がどんな家かってことは知っていましたか。いえ。<笑> Akira had a bitter expression on his face as he lightly nodded. After he saw the house, he thought it might have been better if he hadn't. あなたの勇気に免じて少しなら答えられる範囲で教えてあげましょう彼女のことで何か知りたいことありますか彼女のことで何か知りたいことありますか彼女のことで何か知りたいことありますか彼女のことで何か知りたいことありますか彼女のこと
so he didn't understand. In that case, persuading her for information was pointless. He had no choice but to draw out a confession, but that would be near impossible if she was unwilling to forgive him. In that case, maybe her transformation could be controlled by speaking of her friends. So those expectations buried in the bottom of his heart. Ushi decided to tell him the truth. Ushi lit a second cigarette. After a full inhale and exhale, he looked up at Akira and started speaking. ヒナミザワオムカシ。鬼ヶ淵って地名で呼ばれていましてね。今でもその名前は残っていて、村の奥にある沼。名前が鬼ヶ淵と言うんですが、その底は鬼たちの住む国と繋がっているという言い伝え
代々血筋を受け継いだ御三家という旧家があるんです村の誰もが尊敬してやまない家柄のことでしてね御三家とは具体的に言うと園崎家古出家そして夏美さんの君吉家の3つのことです君吉の家って確か雛見沢の村長なんですよねあいやご存知でしたかしかも君吉家は選挙で選ばれたんじゃない世襲です村長を代々輩出してきた実力者の家系なんですよそして何百年にもわたって村のリーダーをずっと担ってきた何百年もですか At last. Kira finally began to understand the significance of the Kimiyoshi family name and called out in a hoarse voice. To なれば村人たちの信頼はとても厚い。村を代表する家系ですからね。さて、こうした信頼がどこから来るかご存知ですか村の人のためにとても良いことをしたとか、あるいはお金持ちだとか。It was natural to think so. Reputation, wealth, and personal achievement were key factors in politics. However, Bushi responded no, no, and took a step toward Akira, then continued. ね、Ahira thought about the story he had just heard and considered what it might indicate. Then Ushi pushed forward with an answer of his own. <laughs> Akira raised his head the moment he heard those words. In other words, Natsumi's body was filled with the blood of those man eating demons he mentioned earlier? Eh, so you could do this. Kimiyoshke no Ichizoku was ne, Hinamiza no Naka de Mo, Motomo sono Chio, Koku Ketsi da Ichizoku no Stotz Nandesio. Motiron, Natsumi Sammo sono Stori. Takarate, Kimiyoshi ga Oni no Chio Ketsi de Iru. So no goto. 信じているんですかねえそうです確信しているからこそ私たちはここにいるんですバカバカしいいえバカバカしくなんかありませんよ実際今までに平見沢出身の人たちが次々に恐ろしい事件を起こしていますテレビとか雑誌とかで毎日のようにやっていますからあなたもご存知のはずですよね Kira slowly nodded. Without those rumors and reports, he never would have thought about Natsumi that way. Nara, w a k a r i j a n a i d e s k a s h i k a m o k u k e t o a en no usi mono tachi de sura jiken o koshtari, makikumare tarishteiru. Dato sreba, sore jo ni en no fkai kimioshke nankawa, motto hido e koto ni nar. Nante, omoi m o s e n k a n e それじゃ君吉があんな恐ろしい事件を引き起こすって言うんですかいやそれは分かりませんですがそれを疑うからこそこうして調査しているんです分かっていただけましたかそんなアキラ couldn't hide his agitation upon hearing Uchi's words he was paralyzed with his eyes open wide but then He violently shook his head, as if trying to deny that reality. Uzoda! Kimiyoshi ga sonna goto! Baka baka shi! Sonna goto! Ari ena! Well, it certainly was, was anything but impossible in the last arc. Despite saying that, his voice trembled, and there was no strength behind his words. Though he thought it might be cruel. Bushi-san asked in our question. Demo, Anata. 
夏美さんがひなみ沢出身かどうか最初に聞きましたよね<笑>君よし夏美がひなみ沢の出身でそれがどういうことを意味するのかを確認したかったのは彼女に対して何らかの疑いがあったからそういうことじゃないんですか<笑> He suddenly caught his breath because the question had hit a bullseye. <笑>疑いなんか俺は疑いがなくても不安だったそうでしょう<笑>不安の原因はもちろん日南沢の出身だからです日南沢にまつわる噂を口では否定しながら実はあなたは恐れていた違いますか<笑>我々は事件の裏を疑うからこそ調査し真実を知ろうと動いているのですあなたとは違いますこっちは真剣なんですよ<笑> Akira finally raised his head as if repelled Ushi was no longer smiling He was casting a stern glare that felt like it was admonishing the boy 違いますかねなぜならあなたはただ疑うだけだ彼女を信じる勇気もなく真実を知ろうと努力もせずただ逃げているだけ私にはそう見えるんですがねどうです俺は逃げてなんかでは逆にあなたにお伺いしますあの子のこと本当に助けたいと思っているんですかどういう意味ですかつまりはこういうことです最初に確認したってことは人を殺すようなイカれた連中と君吉夏美が同類だったらどうしようかと最初に予防線を張ったわけだあの子のことを心配していると口では言いながらもその点については目をそらしているそれであなたは彼女のことを本当に理解しようとしているって言えるんですかね<笑> Akira finally recognized his own cowardly and selfish attitude on the matter and began to shiver 私夏美と話してみるよ千里うまくできないかもしれないけどいやうまくいかせるそれで元通りになったらアキラくんあとは任せたよええじゃないでしょうあんたが彼氏になって夏美の防波堤になってやれって頼んでんのよいい分かった Back then, Chisara made it abundantly clear. She wanted Akira to protect Natsumi. If she could believe in that, she would do her best. Nevertheless, what did he do himself? Even though he realized the gravity of her situation and knew the truth of her troubles, he refused to step forward. Out of fear that she would hate and reject him for it. Tell me the truth would have been a sensible thing to say. In truth, it's something he should have already asked Natsumi. So, how can he open his heart to her if he's not willing to embrace that? On the surface, it seems like it was his duty to think about her and be considerate. So, could he rely on the power of this detective standing before him in order to save her? I'm going to ask you what to do. What do you want to do? Then, he decided. He wanted to help Natsumi Kimiyoshi. He wanted to grab hold of all the problems afflicting her and believe that they could find a solution together. And if so, there was only one thing to do muster the courage and compassion to ask Natsumi about her problems. What? <laughs> 
君よしと話してきます刑事さん俺たちに少しだけ時間をもらえませんかねえわかりましたそれじゃ何かありましたらここへ Then Ushi pulled out a notebook wrote down the phone number for Kakushi station and handed it over After receiving it Akira immediately ran out of the park やれやれ若いっていいなあ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。How on earth could he make it in time? Perhaps a tragedy was waiting for Akira that would make his hair stand on end. If so, then what he did just now was involve the boy in a dangerous situation. It made him anxious. However, with Natsumi Kimiyoshi unwilling to open up to anyone, there was truly no other means of getting information out of her.、Mm-hmm. He examined his surroundings. He began to feel like he was being watched. The crying voice of the Higurashi echoed through the entire park. Stop it! Hmm? Ushi suddenly felt a discomfort in his back pocket and pulled out his pager. When he examined it closely, he noticed the power was off. Ocha! Shimatta na! 何も起きていなければいいんですけどあーもしもしすみませんひょっとして私に誰か連絡をな本当ですかそれはくそう Oh what now When Ushi got in touch with Madoka she rushed her and she rushed into her urgent message without wasting any time on a greeting Then he immediately hung up the receiver. And then he leapt out of the phone booth with enough momentum to kick a door down and chased after Akira without waiting for a police car. He had intended to prevent a tragedy, but the situation was rapidly escalating in ways that Ushi couldn't imagine. As things are now, Akira is in serious danger. He couldn't bear to see another young person lose their life due to his own actions. As Uchi muttered to himself, he constantly wished for that earnest boy's safety, and he continued running as hard as he could. Yeah, we, uh. Definitely kind of goofed up here a bit, didn't we, Ushi? Put, and that's putting it mildly. Well. So. I guess it's now more or less just a coin toss on what exactly is going to end up happening at the, from this point forward. Did we just make a terrible mistake and just put、uh, Akira in needless danger? And our actions just were doomed to fail? That this was just a tragedy that we were just never going to stop no matter how hard we tried? Or will, Amir- or will Akira manage to pull off a miracle? Whereas ever- where-, where everyone else would fail in doing so, and manage to, re- and manage to reach Natsumi. I was so certain for the past couple episodes that things were only going to head for disaster, but for some reason, now I'm not so sure anymore. Again, I feel like it could be left up to a coin toss at this point in regards to what exactly is going to end up actually happening. 
I do want I do want some kind of ha of happy ending for these characters, but I mean I can't deny that the de deck is pretty pretty well stacked against them on all fronts. So honestly, who knows what's gonna happen? I want to say I guess we'll find out in the next episode, but I feel like I've also been saying that for repeatedly for the past few episodes as well. So, whatever, however this whole saga is going to end, we'll find out when we find out, I guess. So until then, we, we might as well just truck. Uh, we might as well just truck along and just see what happens. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of the Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and feel free to hit that like button since it'll help uh, get my videos uh, out in the YouTube algorithm and expand my reach a little bit to any newcomers who might be interested in seeing what I have in my catalog. I will see you all next time. Take care.